All right, so you guys can't see it, but I got this box next to me. This is the this is the whole uh, what's gonna go on top here. So it looks a lot similar to the to the TSX one that I just got, but comes with quite a bit more 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 stuff. This is the GPS antenna that I was talking to you guys about. Sorry, I just smashed my finger on the door trying to get in here. And, ah, okay. So there's that. Here's all the cables that I was talking about. So we're going to need all the jumper harnesses and whatnot. So I'm going to need to test two of them to try to see which one works for which. Because as you guys can see, there's this one, there's this one. And uh, everything is color-coded, so you can't mess this up. But we're going to go ahead and figure that out as we go. And then there's also this one. This is probably for the AC bottom parts right here. But everything needs to have a jumper, okay? This is for your backup camera. Don't lose that. And this one is for your, all your AV and stuff. You also need to plug this guy in. And this, of course, is for your probably, I think, for the TV. I'm not entirely sure, but um, it is pretty long. So that's so what my guess is. You, of course, got your camera. Which, if you're going to test this out, th these are all going to be separate videos. So I'm not going to show you guys how to install the camera in this video. But I will show you in a separate video. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. This is also for your camera. I already showed you guys all this and then that. And this is for your dash cam. So this is all your dash cam stuff. So it comes with a lot of extras. And this is, the, this is what we're going to install. And if you guys take a look... It has that same base that uh, the other one has. So we're going to need to steal the, the clips here. And it doesn't have the two side screws. We're obviously going to put a ribbon cable right here and uh, put the screen on, on that. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. Um, before my IC, the only screw that I need is the one that fell. The other two that hold it on the sides here, it looks like they're non-existent. So... Uh, yeah, that's that's always nice for that to happen. Or maybe if I take this base off, I don't know. Nope, it looks like it only needs the bottom one. Okay, so we're just going to take this two clips off. And uh, we're going to start connecting stuff, okay? Because I got a box here in my way that I'm going to move. And we got some. This is for your uh, dash cam as well. So let me just get this out of my way. All right, so I'm gonna try this one first um, because it says MDX on it. It also says RDX on it. So I'm not entirely sure what that all means, but we're gonna go ahead and test this one out because the other one says TL and it's missing the canvas decoder. So I think we're gonna go with the one that has the canvas decoder. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in there. Black to black, everything is color coded. So if you guys wanna want me to bore you in connecting these wires, I will. But if you guys want to just see me continue this, I'll also do that. So everything has its own spot. You can't mess this up. See, it doesn't go in there. It doesn't go in there. It's got to go in one of these because it's about the right size. And if it doesn't go this way, it might go flipped around the other way. I'm sure I'm putting this in backwards. Okay, they can only go in one spot. So I am not going to bore you with uh, in plugging these in. All right, so this one, just by the looks of it, it looks like it goes into the OBD2 port. Not sure why, but I'm going to try to run this one outside the vehicle. So first, you're going to loop it inside here, and then we're going to drop it off to the side here because that's our quickest route to the OBD2 port. Just a quick note. All right, so I know it looks like I have a mess right now, so... Basically where I'm at now is everything that has a jumper, you connect. Everything that does not have a jumper, you leave alone and connect back to the OEM stereo. So all these antennas, they're all going to connect back to the OEM stereo. This I am going to uh, route down under there after, uh, after I figure out how the best way to route that is. These, not entirely sure where they go just yet. I don't know if these come from the car itself or from... No, these come from this. So these probably have to go back up too. So let's go route these up. And they go somewhere with these red and white ones. I think you can't mess it up, but you know, let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and try I'm 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 trying to connect this without like without like doing this. 
fully just yet because uh, okay, the way that it's going to sit, I'm not going to be able to like t test stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and move this. Uh, can't even move that to be honest. It still has a screen protector so it looks a little scratched. But um, basically anything that needs to be plugged back into the radio will be plugged back in either the regular way or with a jumper attached to it. That's all that it is. And you can't mess it up because one, they're color coded and two, they only fit in one spot. All right, so all I'm really missing is the uh, is the antenna. But as we can see is that the radio did power on. That looks like a, looks like a Honda Accord or an Audi. Or a Jetta to be honest. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just semi try to figure out the Bluetooth. Oh, come on, I'm trying to like set it up right here without like actually permanently setting this up. It's on, as you guys can see. So let me just get this uh, all buttoned up. I'll connect my phone to it and stuff. So I will have to disconnect for this part. So this has been part one of the install, I guess you can say. All right, so first things first, this has to be connected to uh, RCA. I thought it had to be connected to AUX, but uh, it does not. I think AUX is for something else. This has to be plugged in. The canvas has to be connected somewhere down there. It's somewhere in the back, back here. Um, I obviously don't have the GPS or the 4G antenna just plugged in just yet. I have everything connected except for this guy. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy is for the uh, the hazards. Yeah, so that's why this isn't connected. So this is for the hazards. Everything else is connected. Everything else has a place. Uh, like I said, everything that does not connect to a jumper harness connects back to the radio. So it's plug and play. Um, that's what I mean when I say plug and play. You don't have to cut any wires. You don't have to adjust anything so it's literally you plug it in and press play and you're good to go so the only thing that i had to do since obviously we don't have a uh, navi top unit the navi unit you would obviously uh, use this dial to like put the numbers in but since you don't see that top part i don't think you need it the only thing i did have to put in was the radio code which is that for my car um and yeah so this one i am going to figure out how to run it uh, I don't exactly know what it's for. It doesn't really have a label. Everything else kind of has a label on it. Um, so it does go with the, like I said, it goes with the RCA, not the AUX. Um, but it might be different on yours. Like I said, this is why I like to test everything beforehand. Um, right now, the sound works. Everything is working perfectly fine. And uh, if you guys are worried that the sound would sound terrible because you're going off of Bluetooth for this thing, rather than uh, the stock amp down there, the way around it is to get uh, your hands-free link connected and then you'll still have your stock uh, amplifier kick on and the sound will still sound crisp. I'm not saying that the sound makes it sound bad. I'm just saying it, if you're like a very, very heavy sound person, you're going to want to install an aftermarket amp anyway. But a regular person's not going to notice too much of a difference. It's so slight. I notice it because, well, I do this often um, but a lot of people won't even notice that it sounds off at all uh, just for all of the sound guys it does sound a little off um, but the quick easy way around it is to use your stock hands-free link uh, to get that stock stair stock amp to turn on and if not you can always go up and you can get yourself an aftermarket amp like that guy up there and you can connect all this setup with it um, so yeah Everything has a spot. Right now, I am going to put it all away. So these are the things that I plugged in so far. Um, and there are some slots for like uh, these guys here. And uh, like I said, I am going to install the antenna, uh, which I'm going to plan on putting right there. I'm not going to uncoil it too much because then it'll be a mess because it's literally right here. I'm going to take the clips off of the other one, which are these. And all you have to do is literally just kind of wedge your, wedge your tool in there just kind of wiggle them out try not to break them because there's only two um, and then you're just gonna slide it into place so that's all you need to do is uh, connect everything make sure everything's plugged in right because I was having trouble with this and uh, the thing was not kicking on so it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a bummer 
Um, so my only thing now is if the TV in the back works with just this, or if I can even connect YouTube. How cool would that be if I could connect YouTube to this, um, to that back part? So that's what I'm going to try to do in the future. Because what I think, if it doesn't work out, what I think I have to do is connect this guy here, right here, uh, to these back here to make that work. I know it's going to look a little ghetto, but I feel like I can make it work to where I can put those on the inside. You know, I'm rambling now, so that doesn't all matter. So right now, that's it for this video right here. I am going to just show you guys the final product, but since I am going to be installing a uh, backup camera on this, I am going to uh, cut this video off and then uh, worry about the camera later, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah, so that's, I'm gonna show you guys just everything buttoned up, but I will be doing something behind the scenes for the radio, uh, for the, sorry, for the freaking camera. You will only need this wire, is what I'm seeing. And it should say backup on it. It doesn't, but it should. So yeah. All right, so obviously I'm gonna be making more videos on this. Don't worry, um, I still need to put some of the cables. I just wanted everything back on. I'm still gonna take this back off and uh, fix that. So this is it in all of its glory. For it to work, you do have to press aux, just like the TSX right there. Um, unlike the TSX, you don't have to press it four times, you just have to press it once. You got your Bluetooth, you got everything. Your CarLink 2.0, I'm not entirely sure if that's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but we can actually check that. It might be, it might be Android Auto. Not entirely sure, we'll have to see. Okay, so it is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It disconnected me, so here we are. Um, I haven't set up the backup camera, I haven't set up the dash cam. The dash cam I think I'm gonna put in the TSX instead of this, I don't think my wife really needs a dash cam. Um, and the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, the GPS, I put it right there. Like I said, I was going to, um, I had to unscrew the screws and then you'll see the screws for the stock. It is, it is held in by screws. The new one is held in by tape. So you unscrew the old one, screw in the new, uh, take off the screws for the old one and then, uh, tape on the new one. Um, but yeah, so this is the big screen. Here we are. And, uh. That's pretty much it for the video, guys. I'm going to make, of course, more videos on this entire setup. But this is it for the MDX. Let me know if you guys have any questions. This is a big unit. looks really nice on here. All right. That's it, guys. Peace.